Good morning, Morai Rabotai, Bruchim Abayim to everyone. And I want to thank the Rosh Gadolian family and Terani families and all the other people who have been working hard to make this um, incredible, incredible shiur and breakfast ready. Really, Chazaku Baruch should be as good for you, for your families, Bezat Hashem, to have Banim Ubanot, Tamidia Hachamim, Tzadikim, Vishareem, Bezat Hashem, Orchim Bederich Torah, Mitzvot. Um, and for all those who need shiduch, need children, Bezat Hashem, should be as good of Zera Shimshon. Rabbi Shimshon Chaim Nachmani, as, as we mentioned before, he was the, one of the um, contemporaries of Warachaim Akadosh, the Gdole Hachme Umekubale Italia. Bezat Hashem, our limut should be also for the Hatzlacha of Chayale Israel and all of those Ptsuim, those who have been wounded, Sharifu Ashadema, all of the Asirim, they should Bezat Hashem come back home healthy and. Um, as soon as possible, Amen. Amen. So I want to share with you Parashat Vayera, the upcoming parasha. Really, the three parashiot, starting from Lech Lecha, speak about the life and legacy of Avraham Avinu. And as we mentioned before, Avraham is the father of the Jewish people, even though that, more particularly speaking, is, is Yaakov Avinu, who is the father of the Shvatim, we are Bnei Yaakov, we are called Shivteka, the 12 children of Yaakov, who is Telet Hamim. Abraham had a son that went off the path, so to speak. Yitzchak had a son that went off the path. They were not Mitatam uh, Shelema, so to speak, and Yaakov was. But nevertheless, when we refer to ourselves and we count our avot, Bechachot Mim, as Rashi says in this past week's parasha, we always end with Magen Abraham. Abraham is the stamp of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and he became, in our parasha, Av Hamon Goim. His name was Avram Agadel Shemecha, like Maran Chida writes, if you add all of the letters of Avot, there are 13 letters, before Avraham was Avraham, was only 12, and now that hey, the name of Hashem was added to it, Agadela Shemecha, Bracha, his name became great. Now you have Echad, all of them coming together. But Abraham becoming the father of humanity is really much greater concept than meets the eye. Now we have many different forms of Arvut. Kol Yisrael, we all know, Arevim Zebaze, which means we are all interconnected, and this interconnection is more than just words. It actually has a lot of different halachic um, ramifications in our daily life. I give you examples. For instance, if you come home and you make kiddush, like a kalai say borepria gefin. And then, because five minutes later I feel like it, I'll make another Bura Priya Gifen. You cannot do that. It's Bracha Labatala. You certainly cannot make uh, the Bracha of Kiddush of Shabbat, right? You said it already once, Mekadish Shabbat. You can't just feel like it to say another one. But imagine if somebody comes literally a minute after you said Kiddush, a guest comes to your home. So you pick up the coast again, and you make the whole Kiddush over again, for him. Why? How can you say that? Because because we're all connected. And if he can't say Kiddush, I will say the Kiddush for him. But you said it. But you didn't say it. Because he didn't say it. And if he didn't say it, part of my mitzvah of Kiddush is missing. And therefore, I could say it again to make sure that he has covered his obligation and it's fulfilled his chiyuv as well. It, it stems from the core concept of kol Israel arevim zebaze. It goes more than that. Imagine you're one of those that spends a lot of time and a lot of money on arba minim, avlula, vetrog, and arava, and hadas. Right? There are people who spend thousands of dollars on a set of aravot and, and, and hadasim and lulav and etrog. 
Right? I have a friend actually goes to Hasidish Rebbe's in the 47th Street in, um, in, in, in the Diamond District of, of New York, and he comes with the ma- fancy briefcase, and there's like in every briefcase there's four or six um, etrogim. Right, each one of them goes for like two thousand dollars. I don't know, three thousand dollars. It's like like diamonds. Like, and, and the guy buys one for himself, one for the rebbe, and one. tremendous people. Spend. So imagine you bought the best, right? And now Erev Sukkot, you you stopping by one of these rest stops that they have in, in East Coast. I don't know what here they have, yeah, kind of. And you're looking at this beautiful etrog, flawless, amazing. And a Jew next to you says, oh, that's an etrog, right? Says, yeah, says, last time I, I, I uh, shook a lulav and it took was 35 years ago. Not religious, you know, I would love to do this again. Right, but I live in this like hick town where some, I don't know, you know, middle of nowhere. And it's like two hours before Shkiaf, Mamash Erev Sukkot. There's no way for you to get one for him. He just said that he wants to do it. He doesn't live next to you. You can't even buy one for yourself. But you could always, you live in a firm community. You could get from somebody else. Says the Mishnah Bura, you would give this to him. Because he has to do his chiyuv. He's a Jew at the end of the day. He's not, maybe not really, but he wants to do it. And you will borrow from your next door neighbor. (laughs) Matana al minad lachzir, you'll shake it. And you give this to him. I spend over it, doesn't matter. Because Kol Yisrael Arevim Zebel, Yur Mechuyav, we are obligated to see to it that others do the mitzvot as well. And we are responsible for that. Now, these are different applications. We could go on and on in different applications of the mitzvah of Kol Yisrael Arevim Zebel. Right? But all of this really stems from Abraham Avinu, who was the first one who took responsibility upon himself, not for people who came to him to seek Hashem, but f- to whomever he went to. He would go around proselytizing for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, taking responsibility for other people. That if somebody is doing idol worship, is my responsibility. Like a father would take responsibility for his. So the fact that he became Avraham, which means Av Hamon Goyim, the father of humanity, is not that because Hashem one day decided, okay, he's going to be Av Hamon Goyim. It's because he himself took upon himself to be the father of humanity. It's this way, not this way. If he first took a mantle of humanity upon himself, with his own volition. Nobody told him that you have to do it. But he cared so much about other people that he became that father figure for humanity, right? To this day, he's father of humanity. Avraham Avinu, right? He is our father. Avraham Avinu is our father. And that aspect is what, what um, I want to discuss with you today in two different forms, which really relates to us today. The Midrash says in Tanhuma, Maase Avo, this is brought in so many different ways and so many places. The source of it starts from the Mishnah, the, the, the Midrash in Tanhuma, Berektet, and also it's brought, in, alluded to in the Gemara as well. The Maase Avot, Siman lebanim. What does that mean exactly? Maase avot siman lebanim. That means when you as the father do something, that becomes the reality of the life of your children. In a greater way, if you want to discuss it, a person that's a father figure, and Avraham Avinu is the ultimate father figure, because like the Ramchal explains in Derech Hashem, Avram Avinu took the responsibility of Adam Harishon. Hashem created the world with Adam Harishon being the father of humanity. Adam Harishon messed up. Then 10 generations all messed up. Hashem destroyed the world, gave Noah that mantle again. Noah messed up. The generations, 10 generations afterwards messed up again. 
And this time, Avraham Avinu saved the day, not the day, but the generation, right? He took all of that upon himself, and he became a self-generated Av Hamon Goim. So therefore, he's not just a father and son, but he became the replacement of Adam Arishon. So it's much a much bigger format. But imagine to yourself, a father and a son relationship is more than just the father raising the son. The son has the genetic coda of the father. And many things that the father has <laughs> develop and unfold in the child, right? All the Reese's genetic things that are there, oh, the half a genetic code at least, that that's what the father gives, it's a, a part of the creation, the makeup of the child. Now, let's explain this in, in, in just a moment, how this looks like in Masa Avot Siman Lebanim, right? We find, I'll start with something that's obvious, and Ramban really mentions it, and then give a few small examples, we'll develop one of them and then we'll, we'll hopefully conclude. Avram Avinu was commanded to go to Eris Israel, right? Hashem tells him, and this is one of his nisyonot, Hashem says, go there, normally a person that goes to exile, he loses his fame, he loses his wealth, he loses children, right? I am going to do exactly the opposite. You will have children, you will become more famous, and you'll become more rich. I'll take care of you. You go, I'll take care of you. And he goes there as Canaan, and instead of Hashem taking care of him, what happens? There's a famine. There's no food, nothing to buy. You go to, to Ilad Market, there's nothing there, right? It's empty, right? So what does he do? Instead of trusting Hashem, he goes down to Egypt. He goes down to Mitzrayim, whereupon they take his wife from him. They want to kill him. To, to get his wife. They do take his wife. Then Hashem has to punish the Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Tremendous plagues. And then they, they send them off with tremendous riches, with a lot of wealth. That's how Avraham Avinu became a billionaire to begin with. Right? That sounds familiar? Two generations later, the children of Avraham, they go down from Eretz Canaan to Egypt because of a famine, whereupon they kill the boys to keep the girls, and then Hashem brings tremendous plagues on Paro and on Egypt to the degree that they send them off with tremendous riches, like a carbon copy, exactly, of what happened to Abraham, happened to his unfolding generations. He goes, the first place that he goes to Eretz Yisrael is where? Shechem. First place that Yaakov goes to Eretz Israel afterwards is Shechem. Carbon copy. Right? What happens in Shechem even is, is very much like that. When Yaakov Avinu comes out of Lavan, when he was in his Galut, right? When he comes out of there, where is the first place that he stops? Sukkot. When Jews come out of Mitzrayim as a nation, where is the first place that they stop? Sukkot, not the same city, right? And every single thing that happened in the process of Yaakov coming out, it exactly happened in the process of Jews coming out as well. Like literally to the T. That is Maase Avot Siman Lebanim. And you have it in this week's parasha also. Avraham Avinu is in pain. He just had Brit Milah at age 99. And it's the third day after Brit Milah, which is tremendously painful. And Hashem brings the sun out, it is hot. Nobody is out there, nobody wants to move. Right, he's sitting nicely in the shade over here, trying to not burn, right? And then you have these three Arabs looking people, or Malachim, <coughs> they look like people. And what does he do? He Mind you, right? that we learn in Masechet Avodah Zarah, Tafkiman, that when Hashem gives an opportunity to Goim to do a mitzvah, He makes it a little hot, what do they do? They come, they kick, they curse, and they leave, right? Well, I'll get back to this in just a moment. What does Avraham Avinu do? He sees this from far, and he's in the middle of a meeting, right? 
when someone calls me that I don't necessarily want to pick up the phone, if I happen to Baruch Hashem be in a meeting, <laughs> right, I right away text them saying, I'm in a meeting, Whoosh, right? So he is in a meeting with God. And he says, wait one second, Hashem, you, you can wait. And he runs. He runs with the bleeding and the bruises and the pain. No stitches, no painkillers, no nothing. 99-year-old, third day of Brit Mila. Runs. And then you think he just runs them. He begs them to stay. And then he says, you know, rats. And he says, you know, he runs to Sarah. He says, Mari, let's make these cakes beautiful. And not just one, he goes and shechts three cows and brings. And the Midrash dissects this Pasuk, Psukim, and says, everything that Abraham Avinu did for these people was done to his children exactly. And whatever he did directly himself, Hashem did directly for his ch children. Whatever he did through a shaliach, through an agency, Hashem also did it indirectly through an agency. So it's like mamash, right? Exactly carbon copy. It says, that's why they had, they had the water in them. Right? Sit under the etz. This is one of the questions that Zah Shimshon asked. Why etz? Well, he, didn't, he, he had probably air conditioned, beautiful, like he had a tent. Why Hishanu etz? Why under the shade of uh, the wood, the tree? And he brings the Midash. Midash says, This is where we got the mitzvah of sukkah. That we sit under the hut. He sat them there. HaKadosh Baruch Hu protected us in the Midbar. Of course, the Gemara says in Masechet Sukkah, the Fyud Aleph, that we do it remembering what happened in, in the Midbar. Hashem protected us. But why did Hashem protect us to begin with? Because of Abraham Avinu. So hence the Mitzvah of Sukkah. Right? So you see, whatever you do, whatever decision you make, whatever thought process comes, that is going to, it's like a boomerang. You send it out, and it goes and comes back to you. Exactly the way you send it, exactly that way it comes back. And that could include thoughts, that could include deeds. And by Avram Avinu, it's the creation of the DNA of Klal Yisrael. Right? Why is it, by the way, so important, Rosh Hashanah, the day of Rosh Hashanah? Why is it so important? Because... Just like a child. When is a child born? Created? Ninth month. Ninth month. Okay. I would venture to say it's in the first moment of um, conception. conception. That moment, you could tell if it's going to be blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes, boy, girl, light complexion, the tall, short, everything. The rest of the nine months is just growing. Growing what is. It was created already. Now it's developing. Now it's that genetic code, it's unfolding. Rosh Hashanah is exactly like that moment. The Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the things are written and, and sealed, and now the year starts unfolding. Unfolding what was. Right? That means, on Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur, the you know, unfortunate things of the three weeks ago was there. And then it was unfolding. And it is still unfolding. It's much harder to break a Gezerah than it was, has, has, has been already created. It's a reality that's there. Now you have to change the reality. So the, the beginning of that reality is, is the moments that are important. Hence, every person, when they act, when they do something, that becomes not just for themselves, but they're creating a reality for their children to come as well. Maaseh avot siman is not just by Avraham Avinu. Every one of us, right? A person, the Gemara says this in many different formats. For instance, the Gemara says, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had a grandson that was completely off the derech. 
I am not going to even say what he was doing. Not good. Stuff he was doing was very, very not good, right? And the Mara says, somebody took upon him, so says, can't be Rabbi Shuma Rechai, the author of Zohar, one of the greatest Talaim. So he went and he spoke to this boy, and all of a sudden, he completely made the 180, and he started learning, and he became a big, massive Talaim Hacham. And the Mara says, you know why? Because Torah chozeret la'achsanya shela. Because when the father, the grandfather, has opened this way, has put something in this child, or in this grandchild, that it's there. You just have to blow the dust off of it. Because of Masi Avot Siman Lebanim, when a person does Mesirud Nefesh, goes out of the way, and the more you go out of the way, the deeper this is etched into layers and layers of this DNA, a spiritual reality of a person. By Abraham Avinu, you know, when he, when, when he was Akedat Yitzchak, he gave the ability to us to be Moser Nefesh, up to today, for Kiddush Hashem. Because he did it, he was ready, we, ha we are able to do it. Right? Someone said that the other sons of Abraham Avinu, because he was ready to jump into the fiery furnace for his beliefs, his other sons also are willing to do that, right? Because it's there, it's even, even, even if they are other sons of Avraham Avinu, but they have this ability of Mesirut Nefesh for what they believe in. Because you create reality. It's a scary thing, but it's also heartwarming. Because when you are tempted to do something that you, don't want to, you shouldn't be doing, or you push yourself to do something that you want to do, and it's hard. Whether it's learning, whether it's waking up in the morning, whether it's whatever it is, tzniut, or shminat inayim, shminat prit, learning Torah, finishing shasta. Those moments of pain are the moments you create the DNA of yourself and your generations to come. Generations to come. And that is the core element of Avraham Avinu. He took responsibility for every person. And that became our, our essence. You see, in the parasha we will have that Hashem wants to destroy wicked people. Five cities. Sedom, Amorah, Admaos, Oim, and the city of Sar. And Avraham Avinu negotiates almost like a um, bazaar, like a shuk, mamash negotiates with Hashem. Hashem, please don't kill them. They may have 50 tzaddikim. You're going to do that? That's not justice. Hashem says, if they have 50, I don't kill them. Don't worry. So he says, maybe 45. So says, oh, 45. If they have, no, I'm not going to kill them. Maybe 40. Hashem says, if they have 40, I'm not going to kill them. Now imagine the chutzpah that you need to negotiate like this with God. He's not done. He says, maybe they have 30. You gotta do that. He says, if they have 30, I'm not gonna do it. So maybe I have 20. Hashem says, no. Says, I know I'm being very chutzpah, but let me have, maybe they have 10. I says, if they have 10, I'm not gonna kill them. And you know when, when Avraham Avinu stops? You know when he stops? Never, he doesn't stop. You know what happens? God hangs up the phone on him. Look at the Pesukim. Hashem just leaves, literally. Vayal mimenu. Because he was not going to, to, to concede. Because would you concede if this was your son? He would not. Avram Avinu looked at every person and saw his son. Mind you, Sedom Vamora. Ra'im v'hata'im l'Hashem me'od. They were the, the most, the, there was the sin city of the world. Nowhere else you find this language. Ra'im v'hata'im l'Hashem me'od. This is worse than the language that's mentioned for Dora Mabul. They were wicked to the end. There's nothing good in them. Avraham Avinu says, ah, I can't do that. And you find this in every single leader 
Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem says, I'm going to kick, finish the Jews. I'm going to develop you to a nation. What does Moshe answer? This is again to Hashem. He says, over my dead body, you could do that. I'm not going to let you do as long as I'm alive. Unless you want to wipe me away from your Torah. That's achrayut. That's taking responsibility. Now, of course, it comes first for a person's children. As it says, Avraham Avinu, Hashem says, Avraham asher ani When he wants to destroy Sodom, he says, I can't hide from Avraham, even though it's a different country. But he's my partner in the, in the world, in the creation. I can't hide from him. So I'm going to tell him what I'm planning to do. Right? Why? The Torah itself gives a reason. You ready for this? Not because he's a good man. Not because he's a tremendous tzaddik. Not because he does a lot of chesed. Not because he shechts three cows for three Arabs. No. Listen to what the Torah says. Because I know him. Because I know that he cares and he is going to <laughs> command his children and his people that are he's connected with to keep Torah. That's why he is beloved, because he took responsibility for other people. You hear? That's what Hashem says. I love him because he takes responsibility for his children and for other people. That's why I love him. So for us to take that responsibility, we will live in a generation that people say, like, you do your thing, I do my thing, like, you mind your thing, life, I mind my life, you don't bother me, I don't bother you, Shalom al Israel. Right? This, this liberal thinking way, which again, you could be a libertarian in government, but when it comes to Torah mindset, taking responsibility for other people. And that is something very important. It's a definition of being a Jew. But more so, you want to guarantee your children and your grandchildren to be in the path of Hashem. You start from yourself. Because whatever you do, and Google will tell you you make 35,000 decisions every day. Small ones, big ones. But every one of those decisions that you mindfully make, you just created another genome, another a layer of genetics, of DNA for your kids. And you add all of those things, and you'll see tremendous siyata dishmaya to have children, Bezrat Hashem, and that the children should be tzaddikim, should be going on those paths. It's not do as I say, but you do it, and they will do as you do, not because they'll see it, but because it is engraved in their genetics. Because it is there, etched by you, for generations to come. Bezat Hashem. Amen. Kim Yiratzon.